BFF, Trisha Swenson, but we don't just have her on today because we love her, but we have her on because she is super cool. We call her jokingly the mayor of the town, no offense to the Vale mayor, <laughs> but we have known each other and spent probably 10 out of the last 15 Thanksgivings together. Oh, yes. And she has an incredible journey, just like so many people who have dreamed of the life, she came to Vail, but never left. So we're gonna dive into how she lives the authentic life here. You saw us last week with Jen and Luca Bruno, or I think that was two weeks ago, but we have so many things to share and we're gonna be talking about connection, collaboration, authenticity, and a sense of belonging. And this girl is Minnesota nice, and always so sweet to everyone. It makes everyone Minnesota. feel a little. Dakota. I know, but we same. It's the same niceness. It's all those northern tier states. Have okay, because the blonde nice. hair and the and the definitely. The okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Just you know. Yes, you betcha. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this fabulous woman. She, as I said, she came here for to Vail to ski, but stayed for the summers. And if you guys haven't been to Vail in the summer you are missing an opportunity. It was the lure of the mountains and the people that kept Trisha coming here with connection in the community. And I read this fun article, Farm Girl Does Good. And I'm not even kidding you guys, so many of you are from Texas that watch us, but this girl, darling girl knows how to drive a John Deere tractor. <laughs> not, just a tra not just a tractor. A John Deere. The combine. The big, uh, how wide are those combines? Uh, well, we had a 30 foot header <laughs> on one of the combines that I used to drive in high school. I was, I could barely reach the pedals. <laughs> Drive this huge truck. We, we understand both of you are both five foot two ish. <laughs> so we're okay with We understand that. Wedge heels. Yes, and wedge heels. We're going to talk about that later too. So she came to Vail and she landed this incredible job at TV8 and became the girl every morning that people in Vail woke up to. And there is this darling song that we'll talk about later. Good morning, Vail. And I can't sing, so we're not going to talk about that now. But they just closed down the studio and she created the coolest article that was such an ode to the journey of almost 20 years you did there. But fast forward to the even cooler job of working at the Vail Daily. And a lot of you guys out there knew this week we launched a giveaway and you can still win. Yes. We are giving away a Louis Vuitton duffel bag. Doing it with Johnny Dang wasn't enough. Now, Rob, what do we do? Like giving away free stuff. That's just what I love to do. Every week we give away something free because I'm just that kind of guy. You are, Rob. Uh, I'm a giver. You are. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. You. Oh, yes, I've learned to bite my lip too, but that's 15 years of marriage and we're not on that. We're talking here with Trisha today. Yes, who just recently got married uh, to this amazing cool guy who was so physically fit with two darling girls. But I got my ring from times past. She did, and we went to the incredible ranch wedding, which uh, was amazing. But Rob's going to talk to you about celebrity, because you know celebrities. Well, I first wanted to talk about her first job before the celebrity thing. Oh. Okay, because you know Trisha talked about driving a combine. When she first got here, she got a job working at the... Uh, ski school. No, not the ski school. Well, I'm talking oh. mowing yards. <laughs> Yeah, so my first job was a uh, ski instructor at Beaver Creek Children's Ski School. But then that summer, I was like, now what do I do? And you have a totally different job in the summer, usually. So some of the guys that I worked with said, well, you drive tractors? Like, we work at the Eagle Bell Golf Course. We can talk to the supervisor and see if we can get you a job. Um, they hired me right away. I was mowing the greens. They loved my lines because they were so straight. I got oh two, my goodness! I got two raises during that summer, and I'm like, oh, they're like, Trisha, we're gonna give you another dollar, uh, dollar an hour. We're so impressed with your work, and I'm like, really? They're, and I go, why? And they said, well, you show up on time and you do a good job. And I thought, uh, isn't that what you're supposed to do? But um, there's a few people that like to. Maybe take a nap on the 10 Pro T and, you know, just slough off. But We um, understand that. And, and being in the farming industry, if your rows were off, oh, yeah. that didn't work. And oh. then the family. But let's talk about celebrities. Okay. I know you interviewed Lindsay Bond. Yes. You know, we, we have so many great people that come through Vail, whether it's for sporting events, whether it's for musical events, that sort of thing. But, yeah, Lindsay Bond, we've been interviewing her since she was probably about 15 years old. Back in the day when she was Lindsay Kildow, she was a product of Ski and Snowboard from Vail, 
And um, it's really been neat to see her really grow up in, in front of um, the TV camera and, of course, in front the of the national world. stage. Oh, yeah. and the worldwide stage. And to see all of her accomplishments, no matter what injuries, and she went through quite a few injuries, and a lot of times she wouldn't really, um, you know, expose how bad some of these injuries were. But she was such a fighter and such, she has such a, uh, just grit. such a spirit, grit, tenacity, and grit. Is and she's a Cavalier has. owner. She was on the cover uh, yes. of the magazine, and hers was a blenheim. Well, and of course, you guys know Grace Jelly, Grace Kelly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she owns <laughs> quite a few dogs, and that's oh, been really, really fun to see. You know the different dogs that she owns. Sometimes she would bring them to opening day if she'd be in town, and we'd have them on camera. Because Vale's a dog to, city. Yeah. Vale Beaver Creek. We is. welcome dogs mm -hmm. here. Yes, and you know she's. She's moved on. She's moved over to the East Coast now with PK, Subin. So her house in East Vale, uh, I, I, I know that she was packing up the globes, all mm. of her globes. So all I of think the trophies, she, all the big the trophies, trophies, the world trophies. She has so many. And she had these awesome bookcases where she put them all, but she was packing those up. Um, so, you know, we probably won't see her as much anymore, but I did have a chance to... Um, be with her and interview her the last couple of springs for her Lindsay Baum Foundation fundraiser. And one of the cool auction items she had was to work a day with Lindsay out at um, the horse rescue, Mount Mellon Horse Rescue. Mm -hmm. And um, and so she there was one lucky family that bid on that and then went out with Lindsay. And uh, this is way out uh, past State Bridge, um, up, you know, up. Above the Those that River. don't live here, that's a 30 minute to an hour drive, depending. But State Bridge is a great area for fishing if you like catching big trout. Yeah. I and like you, it there. last year when we could travel to Europe, didn't you even interview her when oh, you were in yeah. Europe? So <laughs> uh, I was over in Europe for the International Ski Industry Trade Show. It's called ISPO. And it's been in Munich for a number of years in their huge, uh, uh, their former airport. So hangers on hangers are housing all these different um, you know, clothing lines and, and ski companies uh, here for next year. Well, uh, we're walking around and all of a sudden we see, oh, Lindsay Vaughn is going to be doing a signing at 11. So I walk over there, run into her. We do a Facebook Live for the Vail Daily, which, you know, we're, you know, seven hours, eight hours ahead of time. So I think it was the middle of the night here, but it was neat. And it's nice that Lindsay, you know, recognizes me too. You know, she's like, oh yeah, okay, hey, Trisha. Like, she gives me the time of day, which is nice, you know, to be able to have her be able to connect with all her fans here at the Vail Daily still. And, and there's know, the a Bell lot Valley. of Olympians from Vail. Yes. Yeah. Bodie, is he? Well, no, but he's not from here. But okay, he would he's come, come through here, here and yes. you interviewed him. Yeah. Hey, Bodie was, was he Utah or something? Uh, no, he was from out east. And okay. so, um, Bodie Miller would always come out in early December and, and November. Well, all the ski training that would happen up at Cabo Mountain and up at Beaver Creek and then mm -hmm. the Birds of Prey uh, uh, World Cup races, you know, the downhill, mm -hmm. you know, the Birds of Prey course, uh, Golden Eagle is noted as one of the top three, not only physically challenging, but mentally challenging races on the world cup circuit you know, you're reaching speeds up to you know 65 70 miles per hour you are just hanging on by a thread on some of these turns and we would watch it every december the usually the first weekend of december Bodie miller darren ralphs you know ted lately they'd be doing um downhill giant slalom uh super g races here so we'd have all of these athletes from europe as, as well just for one week here and, and the athletes really liked it because over in Europe, it is crazy. It's like concerts, it's like rock stars. They're just bombarded by fans. Here at it's Beaver Creek, a little more chill. They can just go to the grocery store, get all their pasta, and you know, train over at the Park Hyatt gym. And you know, the paparazzi isn't around. Mm -hmm. But um, it was really neat to see them year after year. And and Bodie Miller, you know. Sometimes he doesn't love the media, but I would always try to butter him up with like, oh, my nephews love you, you know, just talk about kids, ask him about his kids, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, he was, it was, it was, he was a fascinating athlete. To and then you watch. even talked about former U.S. ski team member Doug Lewis. Would oh, come yes. here. That was like in the early days. In my early days at Good Morning Vail. So I would do the reports from Beaver Creek and uh -huh. the studio was in Bill Bill. 
-hmm. And so about every half hour, 720, 750, 820, 850, 920, 950, I would be doing an interview. They would come to me live no matter what I had going on. So um, whether I had a, a paid guest, because uh -huh. I did have a lot of clients that would come on, a lot of the ski shops, Space Mountain Sports, Beaver Creek Sports, that sort of thing, a lot of real estate agents. But if I didn't have something, I would have to fill airtime for four minutes. So I would try to get whoever I could to come and you, talk to me. You interviewed us? Up I Jones, know, yes. And I was scared the first time. <laughs> you may find this hard to believe. That red light went on, and I was just like, Bobby Brady and the, and the Brady Bunch. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh, the red light. Yes. The red light, what do I do? And Trisha talked me off the edge, <laughs> talked about the Steve McQueen watch yes, I was wearing. I remember this. the Paul Steve Newman McQueen Day. watch. Yeah. Pale Paul Newman Daytona, and I was just like, <laughs> wow, I've come a long way. Yeah, Wacky Watch Wednesday is a far cry from that day in the studio many, many years ago. But yeah, you know, so it's just, it really worked out. But yeah, Doug Lewis would be here for ski testing. Ski Magazine would host the annual ski test each year and these wonderful awesome skiers would come they would blind test the skis they would uh, put like white tape on the skis so you couldn't tell what brand it was what maker model oh. and then they would test them but he, i would i would see them you know uh out doing the, uh -huh. these uh you know the testing and i'd be like doug any chance you could come and do this interview tomorrow <laughs> and he was always such a great talker you know he he knew the industry so well we were just curious about what they were doing and when we could see this issue that always come out in the fall. So I always thank him for being one of my first guests. And I still interview him today because he comes out and he announces the World Cup. Uh, you know, so he's just a, a great ski industry person that we love when he comes to visit. And one of my favorite a co-host of yours is Ken Hovey. That oh, guy yeah. is Hovey. He is crazy. Okay, and so you were talking about the Spur, San Antonio Spur, that noticed him yes. in town. And then he was driving him. Yeah. I mean, explain this okay, okay. world in so, Vail that you work like 10 jobs. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's been said you either have three jobs or three houses. So uh, we're in the three job <laughs> category. And uh, so Ken Obi would not only be the weatherman and the co-host on Good Morning Vail for many, many years, I think about 16 years, but um, he also had a shuttle company called Up and Go Transportation. And he had these you know, nice Suburbans and he'd drive, I mean, he would leave at like three or four in the morning to go pick up someone down at DIA, Denver uh -huh. International Airport or Eagle. And he was happening to drive David and his family from the Eagle Airport. David Robinson. Yeah, David Robinson <laughs> from San Antonio Express. And um, I think they were maybe staying at the Ritz Carlton or something. And then, so they stayed for their week Obviously, they found Good Morning Vale on Channel 8. It was right there in the top 10 channels that you look at. And when they, when uh, Ken, when Ken went to pick them up, um, and, and Ken is very, you know, he's got his nice jacket on. He's very, oh, sir, can I take your bag? You know, he's very professional, very businesslike. He gets in, and, and David's family sat in the back. David sat right next to Ken in the front seat. He looks at Ken, and he looks at his wife, and looks back at Ken, and he goes, Honey, we've got the weather man driving us. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so fun that, you know, to know that David's family had watched the show. Hopefully they figured out, you know, how much snow totals that we had. And, and the, the giveaways. You used to have great giveaways. Giveaways. <laughs> so we like to give away give, things. Giveaways are good. Giveaways are good. But uh, but yeah, but just having that, you know, that that you know, that NBA star recognized. Yeah, it was just no, funny. I loved your interview when you interviewed Obermeyer because he was so yes. old. And not that he's old, because I'm not saying you're old, but he's in his 80s, still swimming okay. and exercising and skiing and crushing what we can do in our late 40s, okay. we'll call it. Well, you know what? So Obermeyer was in his 80s when I first started interviewing him. He was probably about 87 with oh. my first interview. He has now turned 100. Last December. Oh, I didn't realize he's so 100 he now. So he is over 100 years old, and he, he lives in Aspen. And Obermeyer has this incredible story about how he came over here from Europe. He was an aeronautical engineer, and this was um, just an amazing story. And he, uh, he worked a lot with Warren Miller. Okay. They were uh, selling yeah. these, like, crazy little bow tie things. And they were just trying to make money. They were working up in Sun Valley, Idaho. Obermeyer finally got lured down to Aspen. And he was a ski instructor because he grew up skiing. He was probably about two or three when he was on the little wooden skis in kind of the backyard hills in Europe. 
And um, so as a ski instructor, they had this little tiny two-seater chairlift over in the Aspen area. And, um, you know, the jackets weren't what they were. Like today we have such so good technology, technology and yeah. clothes. So change. So um, Klaus thought, okay, I've got to keep these people warm because the chairlift ride is so long, they get cold. And then mm -hmm. we're instructing on the way down. And he's like, because if they don't stay warm, they're not going to come up tomorrow, and then I won't get paid tomorrow. He was very entrepreneurial. <laughs> yes. So he just had this great uh, idea. He took his down comforter that his mother gave him when she found out he was going to North America, North America. She's like, it must be cold in North America. It's not South America, North America. So he got a down comforter, and he brought it over, and he thought, you know what? It's so warm, if I could, and it's lightweight. And I could just keep it on the chairlift for the ride down, and then we'd have it for the ride up, and then we'd do it. But how can I get it so it maybe fits them? So he cut it up on his kitchen table, and his little joke is he had feathers in his cereal for weeks. But um, he cut up this down jacket, and he kind of fashioned it into a parka. And that's what really started the down jacket movement. The big puffy down yeah, jackets. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but he did so much for so many other items in, in the ski industry, whether it was with ski boots, whether it was uh, with uh, sunglasses, ski poles. I mean, that engineering mind and uh, just really uh, put the, uh, you know, he has so many little inventions that really uh, oh, innovate, moved the innovate. industry forward. And he's the greatest guy. He's got the funniest sense of humor. He's got the best outlook on life. And his quote uh, um, would always be, every day you can't ski, you can't get it back. So we'd always encourage people to go out ski. He doesn't ski every day anymore, um, but he was swimming every day. And when you give the guy a hug, he's, he's just like a barrel. I mean, he's so strong. And, um, like that cliff younger next year. Yep. That you, no matter what your age is, you're always building up your muscle mass. And the other book we've just been listening to on the way up here is Malcolm Gladwell, Outliers. Oh, yeah. listening to Fantastic book. But, I mean, his premise is that most really successful people have an outlier moment, and that was his outlier moment. He was at a period where ski clothes were not warm, and he sees that because of his engineering exposure. And I think that uh, that was such an interesting time period for you when you came to Vail is that you embarked in TBA in the beginning yes. when it was in this tiny little studio oh, yeah. and you met everyone and you've been here so long and you love connecting with people and this is the conversation we have with our daughter Bella so yeah. much she's like you tell me it's important to have friends and she puts <laughs> that back on us a lot of times but it's true it's the way our business has evolved during COVID. I mean, you don't meet a stranger, Tricia. Yeah. And and you guys started in that. Tell about the original oh, yeah, studio yeah. with the rain coming in or the oh, yeah. leaks I or mean, whatever. It's, it, it's so funny. And, and one thing about me too is um, I, I when I was in college, I went to college, a small college in Minnesota, Concordia College, and I never knew what I wanted to be. I, I thought I had to have it all figured out when I was 18. Uh -huh. and I switched my major every single semester. My nickname was Indy for indecisive because I couldn't figure out even what to order on the menu. Like I, I thought I had to have it all figured out. And so when I came out here and was a ski instructor first and worked at the golf um, course and then the I worked at an internet company that was a startup, yeah. I ended up um, just kind of falling into the TV8 job. And I think that I want to give people advice, especially people in college, if you don't know what you want to do, it's okay. But if you keep on going towards things that you have an affinity for and that you're good at, you know. And you're passionate. Passionate about. You have that passion there and the work ethic, like yes. you said, with your straight lines on the golf course. Yeah. And it cracked me up. You would look at VHS tape. Oh, yeah. To totally. do research. <laughs> like you put the time in. Yes. And I think so many people just think, well, it just happened for her. Yeah. She was lucky. And that's what Rob says. The luckiest, the luckiest people, people we know are the hardest workers we yeah. know. Yeah. Because it doesn't just fall from the sky. Yeah. You were mowing yards with ski bums <laughs> and you got all the raises and they didn't because you took the time to do it right. Yeah. And to get your job interview, you watched VHS tapes oh, yeah. before. So you knew what was going to happen. You knew you 
you did your homework yeah. before your interview. Yeah, so it was it was so interesting. So um, Linda Gustafson was the main host at the time. Craig Spruby was the general manager. This is the, uh, like, 1997. And I met Linda when um, my friends and I were restaurants in a, a commercial for Tremonti. Remember that in the charter? Oh, uh, restaurant? Yes. And Tremonti, the Italian. So, and Linda Gustafson was there at the, the commercial shoot. And I don't know what came over me, but I said, my friends, I go, I'm going to go ask her if they have any job openings. Like, I had no idea going there. And it was like an outer body experience. So I went over there. And I remember, I remember exactly what I was wearing there. I remember exactly what I was wearing for the interview. And then I, I got the interview. I uh, Linda interviewed me first. And then I had three minutes to prepare for a four-minute interview with Craig Struby, who I, I'd never met before. And it was right during the time when uh, Bill Associates had become Bill Resorts. Hollywood had taken over. Um, and George I, Gillette. Well, George Mike. Gillette was earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Mike Shannon, maybe? Uh, so, yes. yes. But, so, um, the we were we were on the verge of an IPO. Oh. Okay. And we just bought... We should have all bought that stock then. <laughs> <laughs> we just bought Keystone and Breckenridge from Ralston Resorts. And um, so, there was a lot of big news happening. And I remember asking Craig... Um, oh, does that mean TVA is going to expand over to Summit County? You know, and I mean, I just, I just kind of came up with these questions on the fly. And um, and next thing you know, I got the job, and then I was like, now what? Like, wait, I got this job, but now what do I do with it? Like, oh no, like how am I going to do this? But but that's, and I was a deer in the headlights, especially when I first started. But that's when I would go to the little studio in the old Sunbird Lodge. If you remember where the Swiss hot dog stand that's a long was, time Flying ago. Burrito, which then became Bo's Barbecue, and then the Sundance Saloon, uh, one of the last great American <laughs> ski bars, you know. Um, it was right in that building. And I, I couldn't bring the tapes home. So they would tape every show, and it was two tapes because the show was three hours. Oh, wow. So I would um, get security to let me in. I was still working a full-time job, anyway, at the internet company. And then I would, sure. I would watch, I would fast forward, I would take notes, I would fast forward, and then I'd leave, I'd call security, can you close down? And, you know. Commitment. Commitment. Because I was just, yes. I was like, I don't know how. I might not be the smartest person in the room, but I'm going to be the hardest working person in the room. And that was my, my motto. And, um. And it eventually paid off. Well, I love that. And I um, think of so many. So we connected. I first came to Vail in the late 70s to ski. And then we had a place here at Ridgepoint. And you and I didn't meet till like maybe 18 years ago. But I remember we just hosted Jenna Luca Bruno. We're in their amazing store. They were here back in that time. We would talk about the Parmesan cheese that he had at the front oh, the, the of the wheel. store. This wheel, the wheel. And, the, and the place yes. that smelled like cheese. But yeah. I, oh, was a good I cheese, feel though. like people are like, well, what's the difference between Vail and Aspen? How, how should I choose where to go? And we kind of look at it as Houston and Dallas, no events to our Dallas friends or to Aspen, because I love going to Aspen. But it feels down home here, even yeah. though we have every amenity possible with Normally we have the Philharmonic here and we have the most incredible dancers and we have the best fashion here. I mean, look at what, you don't need to go to New York to shop. You can no. come to Douai and shop. It's oh, I know. incredible. Yeah. So what are your, some of your favorite, I know you love so much about the town, but what are some things that people are thinking about coming to Vail that you say you should try out this spot for a cocktail okay. or you should go eat here or... well you know what i mean a lot of people would say well don't, don't you want to be in a big city like and i've never lived in a big city i'm uh -huh. from small town small college having a ski resort be the big ski. you know so i've always been uh -huh. in small. but i think that you have a ton of big city amenities right here whether uh -huh. it's the art galleries and especially if there's an artist that's visiting go to it, you know, meet them, learn a little bit more about them. You know, if they're doing a, a trunk show or something at Luca Bruno, and I mean, Luca Bruno has so many great fashion. I've hosted many of an, an event. <laughs> and and I Thank you, Jen. <laughs> She's dressed me for a lot of awesome events. And, and that's the thing is when you can get to know the shopkeepers, you know, whether it is an art gallery owner 
or uh, someone at the clothing store, the restaurants. There's a lot of heart and soul here, and it's hard. You're a community. It's You're hard community. today. Yeah, so, I mean, to, to shop here, and I think a lot of people have a little bit more time on vacation to shop, to kick back, to, you know, to take a look. You want to bring home a memory, too. Yeah, yeah. And there's, I like the stories behind what you get. I mean, I yes. have stories behind, I got these from Carolyn Tyler, who's an artist who is uh, shows at Dantelene. I got this dress with you at the 101. Yes. I got these from uh, Jen Crum. You know, I mean, so like yes. at, at some of the art markets and you know, some of the different things like, I like when there's a story behind what you get because then it's more meaningful. Completely, and that's so true with our products. And we feel like that even though COVID happened, we were hesitant, we talked about this before about marketing luxury goods to people and where people really want them and is it appropriate? And we found that people want to still have special moments. We don't know when COVID's gonna be over. We still need to celebrate those big birthdays. Graduation. With graduation with Mother's Day, Father's Day, these big happenings. Weddings are still happening. I mean, we're finding ways to still have weddings and veil in a smaller scale and people are still buying diamonds. So we find that there's an interest in people working with people. And I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, you and Rob are even more passionate about your athletics than me. You can get <laughs> back to fashion in a minute. But you guys, skiing. We love to ski hard. We like to have our cocktails hard. <laughs> we like to run up Barry Picker. Danae likes to take the chairlift up and come down with us. There's nothing wrong with that. It's still exercise. Um, yeah taking the mountain bikes out or the road bikes out yeah. or stand up paddle boarding or ATV. Beach cruising. Beach, yes, we beach cruised. I rode my mountain bike. She beach cruised from Beaver Creek to Vail last yeah. week with our Good precious 13 year old Good daughter, job. Bella. Good job, Bella. And there's that one hill. And yes, Bella, it is all uphill. It's all uphill. <laughs> it is, it is. I told her it was a little bit of downhill, but it's the downhill like a flat is. Of high. No. It's when a you false, get, yeah. false, yeah, yeah. false flat. It was false advertising. Yeah. I apologize now. And the golf here is pretty yes. amazing. Yes. Oh. You went from Greensman to now you're a golfer know, a little bit. I know, I know. And Bella's been taking some lessons. I think that, again, you have time at home. We It's 100 yeah. and whatever degrees out. Yes. We've been golfing a lot this year because it is such a good COVID-19 activity. You keep your distancing. Keep your distance. You know, we started in April and um, so I've been buying a lot of golf clubs lately. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. There are also great places to thrift and oh another yeah. adventure that yeah. our 13 year old's been having oh she's shaking her head we're embarrassing her now <laughs> <laughs> the thrifting you can yeah. find great holy toledo here is yeah. so great I, great I got some shop. cool golf uh, golf shirts from um mm -hmm. from holy toledo and they you know they get a lot of great things from the golf shops around here and you know i don't uh you know it's kind of like skiing it doesn't matter how good you ski it's how good you look so I look like I can hit it. Focused. I look at I like I can hit it like a hundred yards. Yeah. And now you can't you can't share a cart. So when you're playing in golf, they don't really know what you're scoring if you're doing a foot wedge <laughs> or what's going on because they're yeah. not with you the entire time. Yes. Not that we encourage any of the foot wedges yeah. or any so of those it's things. It's an honor. It's an honor game. It's an honor game. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have also connected with you. You've invited me to so many awesome events um, for breast cancer awareness. I was able to meet Dorothy Hamill through you. That was so incredible. And you've interviewed great people. Tell us about that organization. Yeah, so uh, the Belt Breast Cancer Women's Group um, celebrated 25 years uh, this past year. Uh -huh. We've now gone into um, more of uh, under the umbrella of the Vail Valley Charitable Fund. And they do a lot for people that have um, come into financial hardship and but still have a medical crisis. I mean, you're kind of one or two paychecks away from you know not being able to pay a catastrophic medical bill. Mm -hmm. And so we are under their umbrella to help those diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, we give each person that has been diagnosed in Blue County $500 for data play. Mm -hmm. And um, also, you know, assist with other things they might need. Uh, we've done meals for them. We've, you know, done- You and I even did a luncheon. We did a video for them. Yeah, and so we did a luncheon uh, at, you know, for many, many years. And so that's gone by the wayside. We will have a virtual um, fundraiser 
that we're, we're just putting together now. Um, the Bail Ballot Charitable Fund, Brenda Hilmo Fund, who founded this organization, mm -hmm. crafting the letter. So that has been uh, a great organization in the money space right here in Eagle County. So that's nice. A lot of people like to know, like, where does the money go or how does it help? And that really helps. And some of the letters we get from people are so heartwarming. Like, you really know. I mean, they say, wow, thank you. I, I couldn't believe it. Thanks. It, it means that somebody cared. So, um, and Dorothy and my, Hall was our speaker two years ago. And then Joan London yes, was our speaker that was last year. And we've had some amazing speakers. Linda Ellaby. We had um, Lance Armstrong's mother. She spoke oh. one time. We had... Um, some, some great people throughout the 25 years. The luncheon had been for 25 years, but probably about 20. Well, people in Houston, when they I say, we really are committed to helping people in bail because that's where so much of our heart is. We This is our happy place. And they're like, well, people in bail are wealthy. And I think it's that disparity people don't understand. And we were so honored to connect with Youth Power 365, part of the Bell Valley Foundation, um, we did this amazing event um, to, or it wasn't even an event, it was to raise funds for a magic bus. And this bus goes in to these trailer parks and areas where people are afraid to go to the school. Some of these parents might not be um, documented, documented um, and they're concerned if they go to school with their kids. And preschool is not paid for through the state here. So this disparity of learning creates an even bigger gap. And it was so incredible to see this. And you were a dancer in the Dancing with the Stars, uh, which oh this gosh. year sadly was postponed. But tell us about your involvement with the Valley and this misnomer of people thinking everybody yeah. here has money. Yeah, you know what? Um, there's, you know, it's amazing how generous this guy is. And then there's so many different nonprofits that you can get involved with because whether it's Canine Companions for Independence or Habitat for Humanity, I've done different builds um, here yes. in the Valley. I've uh -huh. also done some national builds in Lali, Africa, El Salvador, Paraguay. And um, I'm still great friends with people from the Valley that I went with um, all these years later. But you know, there's whatever you're into, you can find a nonprofit that you can align with. And um, you know, this during coronavirus, I reached out to a couple SOS groups, my Colorfax, um, Habitat for Humanity, and I just I just sent them an email, and I just said, hey, you know what? I acknowledge that I want to you know just say that I know how hard you guys are working. You'd raise just keep on knowing that it's making, you know, we're all going to get through this. And, you know, they were so appreciative. I mean, I just sent an email, you know, and I was just like, I just want you to know that it's, it's amazing what people do here. And a lot of volunteer opportunities in case you want that. Well, and that's the other thing is you don't have to fly to another country to go on vacation and give back. There's a lot of ways in town that we do it. And I love this quote in the Bell Lifestyle magazine. You said, I don't feel like I'm part of a community unless I'm involved in the community somehow. Somehow giving back, that's when you truly feel like you belong. And I've been diving into um, a speech. I'm going to start public speaking and a really commitment, connection, and I feel a sense of belonging. And that's what I feel like we're all trying to understand. I feel like Black Lives Matter that it's about belonging and feeling valued. I feel like so much of what's happening politically is about belonging and feeling valued. And I do see a connection in this community uh, between a lot of different people. And I think that's amazing. And if you come to the Valley, there's still ways that you aren't just taking a luxurious vacation. You can truly get back to the place that you you know what? Um, when I first moved here, of course, I moved here with my friends. But then, you know, times change and people move on. And then I was here more just on my own before I, I made the, the next group of friends. Mm -hmm. And I would just volunteer for anything because I was like, oh, wait, you have something? Okay, I'll help you. You know, just because I wanted to have that sense of community. I came from a very small town in North Dakota. And my parents volunteered for all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Whether it was, you know, my dad was part of the life. You know, all the stuff that um, the church and my mom volunteered for the uh, local ambulance 
this year I did. It just they were always given back. So I even spoke at a Fair Resorts new employee orientation kind of where we had all the different nonprofits at the Lodge of Vale set up in the ballroom where um, it was kind of the beginning of the season. All the new employees could see all these mm -hmm. different places. And I got up and spoke and I said that very thing. You know, you might be coming here. This might be your first time away from home. You might be just college. And it, it's exciting at first, but then you might get a little homesick. But a way to uh, alleviate that is to do something, give back, join a, a committee that's going to resonate with you. And, you know, it just, I think it's a, you know, it is. Get involved. Get involved. It's not part of something. Well, I know I like to know good places to eat and drink and listen <laughs> to live music. And to me, that's my camaraderie. Oh, so yeah. I'm doing some giving back, some making donations for yes. my adult beverages. Yes, yes. And, you have some famous singers that have been singing up here since we oh, were kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Phil. Since we were kids. Oh, since... yeah. No. Oh, yeah. You know what? I mean, I love the live entertainment here and the opera ski. Like, it's it's like it's sometimes skiing is just the vehicle to get you to, to get to opera ski. ski. Pick me. That would be Danae. That's why when <laughs> Rob says, do you want to ski at 830? I'm like, no. no. If we're skiing all the way to four, <laughs> we have to go to opera. <laughs> like, I'm going to ski like it's one and then just roll into opera. Let's sleep That's good. Yeah, that's we've our, done that's that plan. <laughs> but um, okay, so Phil Long, of course, he's I, been here for oh, 30, ever and ever. yes, thirty years. I mean, he was with the Red Line for many, many years. Um, he's uh, now he's owner of the Vale Beaver Creek Chop House, and my husband knew him. It, it's so funny. We both knew Phil separately, and although my husband Mike and I did meet at a Lindsey Vaughn event in two thousand nine. We never started dating until January of 2012. Until the light went off in his head, yeah. he realized what a good deal. Was. Yes. <laughs> and we were out we'll talking about that later too. You know what? I know so many people that got married um, and met their guy or their gal or whatever at the Red Lion. I, it's like it was Match.com before there was Match.com. I mean, there was a lot. Oh, that was that was altitude and alcohol. Alcohol and altitude. That's <laughs> yeah, what helps. Totally, totally. It does. It does. But we yeah. were not there. We were. Um, at the tavern, the tavern, the tavern, the tavern. I don't even know. Yeah, what it's now it's Almrazy. Yeah, One of my, I love Almrazy. I love the Alpen Rose. I love those. Um, European and you guys love Brussels too. Yes, we love Brussels. Hello, Dave, and the crew down at Brussels. Um, and then also like Remedy. I think the Four Seasons did something awesome with their lobby bar. That um, is such yes. a great place. New Year's Eve. Awesome New Year's Eve party. Luke and Jen are at the table here. We're over here. We're having yeah. so much fun. I know. Yeah. And then there's also Nova Scotia New Year. We do that on occasion when you used to have to get up at 4 a.m. Yes. yes. We'd celebrate it right at like 9, 9.30. The ball would drop. Uh -huh. We'd start about 6.30 and the ball would drop at 9.30. <laughs> okay. So I do want to talk about um, another thing because since Rob sells wedding rings, I have said... Um, I wish I could figure out why men finally decide to propose. Oh, and I, yeah, tell me. I wouldn't know. it be fascinating? So, <laughs> you and I, when we met, we were single, and you called oh, it yes. the Pro Singles Tour. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. But, and then the PST. Yes. yes. But then you went through this amazing meditation series yes. that you encouraged me to go through. So for all of our single people okay. out there, or people just looking for this place to change yeah. their life, let's talk about that. Because okay. I think that was a really big part of your journey and going to the daily and yeah. marrying and a little everything. Bit. Yeah, I had a lot of changes that happened after that. You know what's funny is that um, growing up in a small high school, small college, and uh, Heavenly Ski School is very small. Beaver Creek Ski School is very small. Like, I didn't want to date anybody. Like, like, oh, no, what do people know? Like, you know, like, because everyone, you were under the Everybody microscope talks. at these little um, high schools. Small town. Small, small, so small talk. Of, <laughs> small town, small talk, that kind of thing. So I, I never, I didn't date a lot. And then, but when I moved to Vail, I thought, wow, there are so many guys like I'm for sure gonna date a lot. But what are the same? Well, what's the same? Well, well, okay, I think it was like I think the odds were like seven to one, you know, uh -huh. like seven guys to every one girl. <laughs> but then I learned uh, the odds are good, but the goods are on. You know, yep. like a little bit tough. <laughs> you don't lose your girlfriend, you lose your turn. Uh, the recycler, there was all sorts of terminology that went around for dating around here. And so um, I moved here the winter of '94, '95, and. Um, 
got jilted around and I was like, well, that's it. Okay, so I just said, I'm starting the PST, the Pro Singles Tour, where you can be single and have a lot of fun and you can get all the single people and we, we go to the movies or we go to Moab or whatever and you don't have to be dating anybody. You're just having a good time with a lot of people. And sometimes I'd be asked on a date and I'd be like, well, you know what? I can't, you know, I'm on tour. Uh, you know, I'm training. I'm on tour. They're like, what tour? I go, the PST, the Pro Singles Tour. And you know what? And then I could just be friends with, with these guys instead and everything. But I had several, uh, not only the PST, but I had the BAD, the Boys of Drum Club. I had the DOA, the Dateless of America. I had the BCC, the Bad Choices Club. Uh, yeah, I had that too. Uh, not know, profit, yeah. <laughs> I oh. remember one or two of your bad choices, but we won't get into that now. And then now. there was the bad habit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'd have nicknames for all the guys, right? Because the town is so small. And you could you be, can't you say be chatting. Name. You could be chatting with your girlfriend, and the bartender overhears you, and he's like, oh, well, that's my roommate, or whatever. Like, but if you called him bad habit, they didn't know who it was. Yes, they did not. Okay, well, Rob and I, on our first date, we were not really supposed to be on a first date. And the bartender at the tavern ended up coming to Houston and buying a ring from him and figured out, I thought I was girls on vacation, but he knew everything that had happened that night. So oh my, you know who knows what's going on? The bartenders and the taxi drivers. They oh know gosh, what's going on in the town. Yeah, that's, that's all. No, story. You get yeah. through and then you yeah, decide yeah, okay. to go through this. Yeah, so... um. And I was chronically single for a very, very long time. And then what kind of happened is it kind of became my identity. Mm -hmm. And I was literally the person that um, my phone number would be given out to the newly broken up, the newly divorced, <laughs> the newly jilted. I mean, I was like, Remy, you're hungry, you're tired, you're poor, you're single, you're, you're jilted. I'll take care of them, you know? And I would be like, listen, sister, you can, you can cry about a bad haircut or your dog dying, but we're not crying over boys. <laughs> and I would just be like, no, we're, we're just, you know, we don't have time for that. We need to move on, move on. So I was kind of like this, you know, un, un, you know, dating coach without even being a dating coach kind of thing. Yeah. And, um, but and then that really became my identity. And I almost would feel guilty if I would start dating someone because I'm like, wait, I'm supposed to be that single girl that that you know takes care of all the other single people and stuff. And then I finally realized that it was a story I kind of told myself over and over again about, oh, why I can't find anyone. Oh, why there's no good guys here. You know, like you tell yourself something long enough and you'll you believe, believe it. it. And, and that's what I learned a lot with um, the meditation stuff that I was doing. And when it finally dawned on me that I was the cause of my singlehood, I was like, Oh my gosh. And then now that I'm in like an incredible relationship and you know, when he says he loves me, I'm like, Oh, I bet you he's not going to call me tomorrow. You know, like, cause that's how it always was with like dating here. Or because we me. make up our, own, we make story. up our own stories. And now I'm like, wow, I really wish that I would have just embraced love so long ago instead of waiting decades. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that, was a real big eye opener is, you know, just think about the stories you tell yourself and are, are they really true? You know, and, and you choose joy. And I love <laughs> that about you every day when we wake up and sometimes I like to wallow in my moments and you're always like, okay, Janae, let's move on to that joy emotion. And so I've, um, I'm really trying that and I appreciated that journey I could take with you. And I think it's important for most people that we talk to that we've had on the podcast, it, it's either their faith, and I know your faith is strong, it's or they meditate. I found a lot of peace with yoga and that thoughtful. Sometimes in Rob jokes, because his sister is a yoga master and she goes to retreats where she, and he says, what and did you go, think about? They go to retreats <laughs> where they don't talk for 48 hours. I go, well, what did you, you That'd be you hard do? for you and I. Yeah, that yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't last 40 seconds, but... Um, before we get into all of this, too, a really funny part is how many bridesmaid dresses did you have oh, yes. one year? Oh this is just just to let people know how Whoa. not okay. always a bridesmaid, yeah. eventually a bride. Yeah, so there was, uh, I call it the wedding season, and this was um, 2006, so it was Memorial Day of 2006, Labor Day 2007. 
I went to 13 weddings in 15 months. And um, some of them I were bridesmaids in. You know, we were all getting older, so sometimes there wasn't bridesmaids, you know. Um, but all my friends were kind of, um, you know, a lot of them were like, wait, I, I'm this old, I gotta have a, a, a baby by the time I'm this old, you know, so like, yeah. panic button, panic button. And um, oh my gosh, I was flying all over. I mean, six of those weddings were in Colorado, but um, Maine, Indiana, Florida, California. I mean, I was going all, I mean, my boss at the time, Craig Stroke, he was like, another how, wedding. How do you go to all, <laughs> why do you go to all of these? But I loved them. I loved them. And you know what, you know, either the bride, the bride's mother or the bride's grandmother would say, Oh, sweetie, you'll be next. <laughs> you know, cause like, I was just like the perpetually single girl at these weddings. But you know what? I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it because I didn't believe it was going to ever happen for me. And I was like, no, but I was truly, genuinely happy for others because the idea was like, oh, wait, that, that, that's for them, not for me. You know, and, but, um, but yeah, I, I loved all those weddings. I mean, I love weddings. They're so unique and they're just so special. You were at our wedding 15 years ago. Yes, I was at your wedding up at Beaver Creek at the chapel mm -hmm. with the Grand Girl. Well, we, our time is coming to an okay. end, but we, you are the picture of connection, commitment, uh, belonging. You are truly one of my closest friends in the world because you listen. And whenever I'm with you, I feel hurt. And I think that's a big part of connection with people. And uh, we appreciate you. I don't hear what you said. Oh, Siri is just chiming in. My apologies, Siri. <laughs> but we love connecting with you. If you guys haven't been to Vail Beaver Creek, now you know what you can do here. And hopefully, if you're on the Pro Singles Tour, you're inspired by some of this, and we can let you know what meditation. If I can you're... still consult. Exactly. <laughs> and I have to say that truly, um, the journey of meditation that you that you sent me on changed my life in such a good way and our marriage in a better way and um we treasure you and come see us luca bruno due today please forward the podcast to your oh, friends oh, the bag, the the table. go to the vintage contessa tag two friends go to the bell daily tag two friends follow us on youtube and you can win. one more time look free stuff from the cremostas <laughs> and Vail Daily. <laughs> yes. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.